Hi, good morning, everybody. I appreciate your time this morning and I uh, hope you're having a great day so far. Uh, we're super excited to be here with you and to be a participant on the CleanLink FastCast as we're going to talk about the hidden cost of inaction and why implementing change is key to your janitorial business success. Uh, my name is Mark Layton. I am an enterprise sales consultant and I've been with Aspire almost a year and a half. But prior to that, I spent the last 15 to 20 years in the direct field of building service contractors uh, in various markets and have had a lot of experience uh, from day to day operations to running branches and uh, regional roles as well. I also have with me today Todd Weedman, who is one of our outstanding implementation managers. And uh, Todd, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Mark. Uh, as you said, my name is Todd Weedman. Um, I've been working with Aspire for five years now, just celebrated that anniversary this week, actually. Um, and I do work as an implementation manager, which means that I assist our clients uh, once they decide they want to utilize Aspire as their software solution um, to get their business set up and, and running. So um, it's a pleasure to be with you today and talking about what we do. Awesome. Thanks, Todd. Appreciate you being here with me today. Yeah. Uh, so for our agenda today, we're going to talk about the current state of the industry, uh, give a little bit of insight on day-to-day -day business challenges that we find with our clients, uh, greatest areas of opportunity, uh, and most importantly, the risk of avoiding taking action, uh, tips for successful change management, and looking at long-term outcomes, and then eventually we'll uh, take part in a Q&A for you here today. Uh, go ahead and move to the next slide, Emily. So when we take a look at the current state of the industry, you know, janitorial companies in general are facing a multitude of challenges like many uh, companies in the market today, right? It's razor thin margins, uh, immense competition, inflation and rising costs, operational inefficiencies across the uh, companies and, and the markets they serve, uh, the market pressures in and of itself. Um, and so we'll, we'll take a little bit of dive into each one of these individually. So when we talk about thin margins, you know, janitorial companies historically operate on thin margins. And actually 91% of BSCs cite that maintaining profitable margins as a current challenge, according to the 2022 Cleaning Maintenance Management and CMM survey. You know, inflation and rising costs across areas such as labor, uh, wages, staffing, training, retention of those team members, supply and shipping costs, as we all know, uh, and then as we relates to operational inefficiencies, you know, staffing gaps on the workforce management, uh, which affect consistency and quality of work. Uh, again, 92% of uh, building service contractors claim that staff hiring and retention is a current challenge, according to that same 2022 CMM survey. Uh, but we also want to take a look and understand, you know, how the effect of disconnected processes, data, and business management methods or solutions can limit the visibility across your companies as well. Um, we talk also about market pressures. Uh, everybody faces that, but in uh, a market such as ours, you know, growing customer expectations, uh, increasingly intense price competitions, evolving safety and health standards, uh, as well as the desire for eco-friendly practices and products. Year-over-year uh, -year growth of new work scheduled remained flat in 2022 in comparison to year-over-year -year median revenue growth of 10%. Uh, so the same amount of jobs equals more price competition, but less margin. Next slide. You know, we, we have a lot of challenges in the industry as a whole, um, but we really wanted to dial in on what we felt like were three most uh, pertinent challenges to the industry. Obviously, labor management is a huge component of that. But, you know, labor management is so dialed into what a client feels from a satisfaction standpoint. And as well as your organization uh, may be faced with some stagnant growth. Uh, so as it relates to labor management, schedule uh, scheduling staff according to customer needs, as well as ensuring scheduling services are performed. Um, you know, monitoring and performance uh, of the quality of work to ensure that your customer expectations are met are another key component that uh, the industry faces as a challenge. And then obviously having the ability to clearly communicate and, and, and communicate effectively with the staff while they're working, what, what do you have in place to do that today? 
Um, we also take a look at providing employees with tools that empower them without creating complexity. Uh, the overall goal is to reduce administrative burden, but increase the amount of revenue that a full-time employee can handle. Uh, and then we all obviously we all want to keep our customers happy, right? So what are we doing today to maintain high quality standards and meeting scheduling needs, uh, communicating clearly and transparently with the customers and swiftly resolving their issues, uh, meeting customer expectations around service quality and consistency as well. And then as it relates to stagnant growth within the market segments, estimating work at the right margins to achieve greater profitability is another succinct challenge in the industry. 89% of building service contractors claim winning profitable bids is a current challenge, according to the 2022 CMM survey. So increasing revenue and capacity to handle more work is important. Uh, getting insight into actual business performance, understanding actual versus estimated cost is a critical uh, gap in the industry. And then making informed decisions based on data, not assumptions based on client perception or team member perception is critical as well. We can go ahead and move to the next slide. So when we look at what we call the Franken system here at Aspire, uh, you guys may resonate with this slide quite a bit. You may recognize some of these uh, graphical icons, but you know, many companies today start out uh, using low cost point of solution for managing a specific business problem, i.e. maybe it's your email client or your calendar, or maybe you have uh, Excel spreadsheets for estimating, maybe you have some type of time management or record keeping system. Uh, but as you grow and more tools are added, the patchwork of those set solutions become more complex. And that creates a bigger challenge for building service contractors within the industry. Uh, and it does that because the investment of time required to manage the business in this manner greatly impacts efficiency and creates risk for error. And that's because the solutions aren't integrated and they don't share critical business data and require companies to manually track or enter that data across multiple systems and user interfaces. So you have a lot of manually extrapolating data out of one system or process and putting it into another. And that's a huge time waster. Uh, it also creates a vacuum and doesn't provide a single source of truth. And so often when we look at this type of Franken system, the management of this system falls on one key individual uh, and the time and effort to manage and navigate that web of solutions in inhibits that scalability of your organization critically. So if that person leaves your company and or, you know, the company loses valuable historical knowledge, uh, it creates a, a real issue within the industry and within your organization as it pertains to your team, how you deliver results to the clients and how you maintain and protect that profitability that you projected. So the situation definitely puts your business at a significant risk in today's economy. Go ahead and move to the next slide, Emily. Thank you. So what are some of the greatest areas of opportunity, right? Cleaning up operational inefficiencies. Uh, so factors like inflation, rising costs, and market pressures are not likely to change, uh, but companies can only truly influence internal factors that are holding them back. So by implementing technology, companies can actually clean up operational inefficiencies to ultimately improve those thin margins, address going, growing customer expectations, and particularly as it relates to the consistency of quality of service uh, and help drive the organizational growth uh, holistically as well. So, you know, I'm going to hand it over to Todd as we move into the next slide to talk about workforce management. And this is really his wheelhouse as he onboards our clients on a daily basis and understands the pressures they face and the complexity of that inaction. Todd? Yeah, appreciate that. So Mark's spoken about some of the challenges that we face in the industry. Um, he's talked about how, so, how software can provide solutions, but sometimes software can also create additional problems. So if you're looking at software as a solution for your business, it's really important to find the right software. Um, so I happen to work for Aspire. I work with clients every day, getting their business up and running and live with Aspire. So some of the things that I think are really, really critical for our janitorial clients who come on board, um, first off, just with workforce management. So empowering your teams with the tools to increase their efficiency, right? Rather than decrease their efficiency. We don't want complexity. We want to make their lives easier so that they can focus on the things that are most important. Right. So Aspire offers time-based scheduling 
for scheduling visits within specific timeframes, rather than just in an ordered sequence to say, go to this property first, go to this property second. So you can do time-based scheduling for any particular day and managers can set the working hours for their crews, make that view available uh, right uh, on the schedule board and also scheduling uh, for day shift and, and night shift for overnight crews as well. Um, we also facilitate absentee notifications, right? These are going to send you a text message alerting you immediately if a scheduled visit doesn't begin at its designated time, right? So we talked about just some of the difficulties of turnover with your labor, right? Worst thing that could happen is your employee doesn't show up and a, and a building doesn't get cleaned, right? So having a software that's going to notify you to those things so that you can be agile, send somebody else out there, make sure that your customer's property is being properly maintained. Um, we um, also have um, <clears throat> a crew mobile application that your field employees are able to use. Um, that's going to, uh, first of all, help you to process your payroll more efficient, uh, more efficiently, um, but it's also going to tie those hours to your jobs for real-time labor costing. All right. So, um, and additionally, that Crew Mobile app facilitates two-way communication between your office and your field employees. So if an issue arises, a customer calls the office, something needs to be addressed tonight at that property, you can create a communication to your employees from the office that they'll see later tonight. And likewise, those employees can respond to those issues through the Crew Mobile app, even providing photographic evidence that issues have been resolved. We also have some site audit functionality uh, that your account managers can use to help ensure quality assurance with your properties. Um, this functionality is also extremely helpful to account managers, not only in assuring the quality, but to identify, estimate, and quickly win hidden opportunities, right, simply from their desktop or laptop or tablet device. All right, let's move to the next slide. So the next area where software can really help your business is with estimating, right? And this is a game changer for clients that I work with in implementation, right? Uh, job costing is so big. Aspire does provide real-time job costing, and that can be viewed in reports to help you to inform your pricing, right? And this allows measurement of actual performance and cost versus what you had estimated and based off of past performance. So you can see a particular property, perhaps you estimated five hours of labor, but in actuality, it's taking your employees five and a half hours every time they go out there, right? That adds up quickly. So having real-time job costing and reporting can help to save you, right? And help you to make better decisions as you're estimating in the future. Our estimating functionality enables you to account for your estimated costs, right? Using a catalog of labor, material, equipment, subcontractor, and other costs. Right. And then we automatically factor in your company specific gross margin goals, net profit goals, right, into each service in order to facilitate the quick turnaround of new proposals. So a potential prospect calls you, they want to bid. Aspire also allows you to build and save custom bidding templates and kits with production factors, right, so that you can quickly produce a reliable estimate to your customer. Right. And upon completion and review of those estimates and proposals, right, you can actually look at this and see what is the estimated gross margin for this job. Before you ever send out a proposal, you can know, am I going to make money off of this or not? Such a powerful tool. All right, let's go to the next slide. So I referenced earlier issues and how those can be managed from the office as a two-way communication with your field employees using the Crew mobile app. Right, keeping your customers happy is a challenge. That's something that Mark has already brought up. So facilitating easy communication, resolving issues quickly and ensuring that you're consistently meeting your customers' expectations. These are key, right, to keeping those current customers um, and also to opening new opportunities with those same customers for your business. So Aspire facilitates three-way communication of issues right, between your customers, your employees, and your office managers, which enables transparency in communicating with your clients. It also provides your customers with reassurance that their needs or concerns are heard and are being properly handled. Um, and in addition to this, custom reports can be built to stay on top of those open issues, 
keep track of your progress towards resolution, and ensure that none of those issues fall through the cracks. So let's go to the next slide. Mark, do you want to talk about risks? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Todd. So, you know, there's obviously a lot of risk with running an organization in today's economy. You know, growing inefficiencies, poor quality and low satisfaction, uh, and then missed opportunities as well to protect any level of growth uh, and make sure that that is not stagnant. You know, and we found that uh, according to a Forbes 2018 report, 90% of companies that failed to adapt to change actually went out of business, which is pretty astonishing. So as we talk about labor management, increasing labor costs due to issues of hiring and retaining staff, you know, 70% of employees are more likely to stay with a company that is constantly innovating, which I think that's huge coming from a previous operational background, um, being able to put an easy to use tool in front of my team member and have them have the ability to take care of my customers on the fly in real time and provide data analytics around that is huge. Um, so, you know, the, the science of innovation, how to create a, an innovative culture that drives employee engagement and performance uh, is also um, a, a pretty good article that you can read from a report from Microsoft in 2017. Um, but, you know, how are you increasing the chance of, of errors due to inadequate workforce management methods? Uh, how are you minimizing that risk as well? Um, so when you talk about reducing those errors based on workforce management methods, providing consistent processes across your operation for your team members to adapt are critical as well. Um, not having the ability to provide solid quality control and staff accountability due to lack of effective tools is another issue within the industry. Uh, and then having the ability, as Todd mentioned in that application, to communicate clearly and effectively with staff while they're working uh, is another critical solution that companies should really be embracing today as it relates to technology. Um, and also providing the, just employees in general with the tools they need to do the jobs well without creating complexity. Again, as I mentioned earlier, reducing that administrative burden for your team and team members, uh, but increasing the amount of revenue within your organization that those same team members can handle uh, without increasing the complexity of that as well. You know, as it relates to poor quality and low satisfaction, you know, customer satisfaction is critical. Um, we used to have a saying when, when I was actually running teams uh, out in the field for, for companies that I uh, used to work for in the BSC space, right? We're only as good as last night's clean. Um, customers have a hard time relating anything beyond that. So lack of flexibility in scheduling and the inability to ensure quality and consistency in the work, a limited means of communication and lack of transparency with the clients, uh, and then also frequently falling short of client expectations, whether real or perceived uh, reality on their behalf. Um, you know, and I think that last one really hits home for me based on my experience, because if you have the right tools in place that provide that level of transparency, you can quickly alter the perception of the client by providing uh, actual data to back up where your teams uh, have been out in their facilities. Uh, and then lastly, we talk about missed opportunities a lot. This is a big one uh, within the industry. Lack of visibility into business data, uh, which leads to a limited understanding of true costs and the inability to scale the business expand into new markets or take on big clients or large scale projects, uh, and then miss revenue goals due to losing deals to the competition. How are you tracking that data? How is it affecting your organization? Do you have any benchmarks or any way to actually uh, contrive that data, put it into one place and be able to analyze it in real time? Those are all critical components of analyzing the risk within your organization today. Todd's going to talk about the impact on what those things would cost a, a company on the next slide, and we can go ahead and move forward. Yeah, so what happens if we fail to adapt, right? We we have this information. We're going to use a case study just as an example of a, a $5 million company. So um, first of all, if we're not taking this seriously, we're going to wind up with inaccurate estimates. So we've found that most commercial cleaners price their services based on previous job data or gut instincts. But since actual burden labor costs are either unknown or not visible to those doing the estimates, pricing isn't based on true costs, right? So they know that their field employee is getting paid $15 an hour. That's what the employee sees on their paycheck. But there's also burden costs to that. What are you paying in FICA? What are you paying in insurance for this? 
right? Is that burden being included in your estimated costs, right? So if we're not recognizing that, the result is that we're walking away from potential profits, right? We're leaving that on the table. For a $5 million commercial cleaning company with 100,000 laborers, right? Or 100,000 labor hours per year, even a small difference of just 50 cents per hour in your labor rate translates to $50,000 in lost revenue and profits, okay? Um, another issue here is just managing hours to your budget, okay? So going over hours and not realizing it until it's too late is another really costly problem for your business. And this often happens far enough into a contract that it may not even be recoverable. So companies end up hitting their labor hours for the month, but miss their profit goals, and they don't understand why. And we actually estimate that at least 5% of hours are wasted simply because actual labor hours and dollars aren't tracked against the budget. And that's why that real-time job costing is so critical to your business. So for a $5 million commercial cleaning company with 100,000 annual labor hours at an average labor rate of $15 per hour, this translates to $75,000 in avoidable labor costs, right? And then lastly, just some missed add-on opportunities. Uh, we also estimate that up to 15% of revenue growth is missed because a team doesn't have processes in place to manage add-on jobs or uh, change orders. So while new contract sales may, may be evident in a CRM, opportunities to upsell on existing jobs just are overlooked because systems and processes don't exist to capture, to track, or to follow up on those kinds of opportunities. So conversations or emails about potential add-on jobs often get lost or overlooked, or opportunities are only pursued reactively when prompted by a customer as opposed to taking a proactive approach. So again, with the example of a $5 million janitorial company with a net profit of 12% on add-on services, this translates to $90,000 in lost profits for your business. Mark, you want to talk about facilitating some change? Yeah, absolutely. And I, man, those figures are staggering uh, in how that impacts an organization at that level. You know, when we talk about facilitating change, uh, you can go ahead and go to the next slide, Emily. Thank you. <laughs> You know, ensuring a successful implementation is critical. So by implementing technologies, companies can identify and clean up operational inefficiencies that we've discussed and ultimately improve those thin margins uh, by addressing growing customer expectations, particularly related to consistency and quality of service. And so, you know, coming from that operational background, you know, we know change is not easy. But one of the things to keep in mind is when you, you put a system in place that standardizes your processes across the operation, you start to matriculate that data in real time and have the ability to pivot and change the direction of your project, your organization, or your team members in real time, which creates those scales of efficiency across the operation. So as it relates to facilitating change and ensuring a successful implementation of a software program to help your business, Todd's going to talk about what he works with our clients on a daily basis uh, and just tips for success overall. Yeah, so let's go to the next slide. So I like to have this conversation with any new clients that I onboard to start the process of their deployment. All right, so first and foremost, what are your objectives? What are your goals? What is it that you're hoping to get out of the software and out of this deployment experience? So we talk about clearly defined SMART goals, right? So uh, that's S-M-A-R-T for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. So for example, we want to grow our business, right, as a goal. It, it's just, it's not enough. It's not specific enough. It isn't time-bound. But something like, we want to increase our gross margin on recurring service jobs by 5% with one year, right? Now, that's a clearly defined goal. And when you set these goals, it's crucial that you also communicate this with your entire organization. Um, so I'm currently on site with a client. Uh, they're in the middle of their deployment, was having a conversation with their CFO. He told me that six months before they started the deployment, he was talking about this with his leadership. He developed right, right there his team that was going to be participating in implementation. They understood what their objectives were 
right? Long before they even met me and started the process. Uh, last year, I was working with a client to implement Aspire for their business. Their CEO set a really audacious goal for his company to be fully live in our system within a couple of months of their own board. Now, some of their team members were not enthusiastic about the changes that were coming to their business, um, especially the accountability that this software would bring. And they weren't investing their time and effort into learning how to use the software. So their CEO emphasized in team meetings, right, that they would be live by that deadline. He even invested in flyers that were hung all around the office, on the front door when they walked in, with a countdown of how many days until we go live with Aspire. So he made sure that everyone knew what was the expectation. No one could say, well, I didn't know. So setting shorter-term goals can also serve as success metrics during an implementation. Uh, for example, getting all of your legacy contracts loaded several weeks prior to going live. Right? This gives your operations team ample time uh, to run mock events for training, perhaps having one or two of their crews going soft live before rolling out the software to the rest of the team to give an opportunity to iron out any wrinkles before going fully operational. So, you know, that old adage is used a lot, but it is so true, right? Those who fail to plan, plan to fail. All right, let's go to the next slide. Right. So we also want to talk about minimizing internal resistance. Having the right people on your implementation team is so critical to a successful deployment. Sometimes they may not even be the most obvious choices. So I've led countless deployments where the team of power users at the end of the deployment were not the folks who had joined the onboarding call. Okay, Successful power users are usually technically savvy. Right, They're adaptable they're creative, and they're invested in your business. It's really important to include your employees in that process to allow them to bring their institutional knowledge to the systems and processes that are deployed. And while bringing knowledge of your business is important, remaining open to change is equally essential for a successful implementation. And there's a reason that you're looking for a new system, right? It's because your old system wasn't working as well as it ought. So if you just rebuild all of your old systems into a new software solution, you can't expect much by way of results. So change management is critical. Lastly, it's also a really good idea to involve folks who will be uh, your power users in the whole deployment process from beginning to end with the goal that they're going to serve as your internal support team and training team. So as you bring on new employees, they're going to lead right that process of training um, and orienting them to your software solution. All right, let's go to the next solution or the next slide. And Mark, do you want to talk about uh, planning to succeed? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so when we talk about planning to succeed, um, make sure your plan to succeed and you're open to change. You know, I, I think a lot of what we see within the industry as a whole and with onboarding clients is they're so accustomed to existing processes and practices, they try to take those same processes and practices and fit it into the new solution that they're they're trying to implement. And my one challenge to you is, as an industry as a whole, is that if you're going to adopt a new process, adopt the process for the way it's designed to work and flow, not based on your existing practices within your organization. So, you know, things to keep in mind are you want to select a provider who can support your needs. You want to identify the key goals, actions, and outcomes. As Todd mentioned, you want to absolutely assemble the right team. And you want to have uh, measurable processes as you go and adjust for success uh, throughout that process. Don't be afraid to embrace that change. The industry is, is at pivoting as a whole uh, as it relates to embracing technology. And the one thing that I can say is that you know, when you want to make a plan for success and you've got to get the buy-in from your team, leverage those internal resources around you, leverage the partner that you're considering working with in the future, and make sure that you come up with a, a really well-articulated process and plan for what that uh, implementation is going to look like, and, and you will be successful. We can go ahead and go to the next slide and talk about outcomes. So, you know, we like to say within the industry, anytime you're making a business decision that's going to change the process or 
uh, key deliverables within the organization as a whole. Anytime you're asking your team members to adopt new processes or change, you want to make sure that you're actually driving an outcome, a business outcome. Um, so you, you know, some of those examples would be higher efficiency, work with uh, better workforce management. You know, the ability to wow your customers with elevated service quality and consistency by the tools that you're using and embracing compared to your competitors. And ultimately achieve your goals with greater profitability. And you can get that by standardizing your systems across the operation and consolidating that data into one system of record. So I think at this point, I, I hope we've uh, provided some great insight to you today and we'll open it up for a Q&A. All right, Mark and Todd, uh, you hear me all right, right? Uh, we have a few questions uh, to go through here. Uh, first being, what are some common hurdles to implementing uh, a new software? Todd, you want to take that one? Yeah, so uh, make sure I heard that right. What are some challenges uh, to implementing a new software? Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, so, I mean, one of the things that we've we've talked about um, is just resistance to change, right? So um, making sure that you've really thought through your change management, how are you communicating internally to your team, making sure that you've selected the right team members to avoid, right, some of that resistance. Um, it's a lot of work, right, to take your business, it's, it's in a bucket and turn that bucket upside down and pour it into a new software. There's a lot of data entry that has to happen. Um, and I think sometimes people don't account for that as part of their implementation. We've got to get all of your contacts, all of your employees, all of the properties that you manage, right? We need to understand how you're going to be invoicing those customers. We want to get all of your legacy contracts entered, right? Uh, and, and with all software, it's data in, data out, right? Or some people say garbage in, garbage out. So you want to make sure that you've got people who are competent, Right, who are going to make sure that they get good, clean data into your system, right? Because if you don't have good data, that software really is not going to help. Makes sense. Actually, that's a good segue into uh, the next question we have here. Um, what, what, recommend, re, what recommendations do you have for assembling the right team to lead uh, change internally? Yeah. Um, so I, I think I briefly mentioned it on a on a couple slides earlier, but you know sometimes you're looking for people in leadership in your organization to be your implementation team. Um, that's not always the right course of action. Um, are, are the people in leadership of your organization really aware of the details of how you build estimates or how? Um, you're managing your field employees, right? We need people who understand the nitty gritty day-to-day -day business, right? So that we can make sure that um, their processes are built into, right? The deployment. Um, and I think also, you know, the reality is often our, our leaders are not tech savvy people. Um, so finding somebody within your organization who, who understands computers, who gets the logic of software, can make such a difference to your business. And those people may be emerging leaders that you've not even identified yet. So I, I, that's my suggestion. Great. And then final question I have here, um, how does your company define success uh, for customers going through an implementation? Well, we go back to those goals, right? That's something they're gonna talk about with their sales rep. Um, sales reps going to communicate those goals. When I do an onboard with a new client, I want to hear their goals, right? I, I like to do what I call a shareholder meeting with everybody um, on that initial call and just ask them, what are your hopes and aspirations for how this software is going to impact your business? But also, what are some of your fears and anxieties about that? Um, those two questions can bring out a lot of really helpful information that is just under the surface and often not discussed. But understanding what are your goals as a business, right? Do you want to see an increase of gross margin? Do you want to see um, greater efficiency of processes? Do you want to see um, increased communication and openness? 
right? Uh, so Mark had talked about this idea of uh, turnover in your business, right? So many janitorial clients have one or two people who understand everything about the business. It's all up here in their brain. And God forbid they get hit by a bus tomorrow because it, it could completely destroy your business. So I think one huge um, aspect of success is are more people in your company and franchise? Do they understand processes so that your business, uh, one, can continue, right, if, if you do have turnover? But second, that we've set you up for success for scalability, right? We've built templates. We've built kits so that you could hire a sales rep off the street, right, to go after new markets. So I, I think that those are those are important things. I don't know, Mark, do you have any input in that? No, I think it gets back to what we've been discussing uh, this entire uh, cast, and that's, you know, standardizing your processes across the operation to create that scale of efficiency across the team member. Could you walk in and show a new team member exactly how to go out and uh, submit a one-time work order to a client with templates that are already pre-custom formatted um, and look the same no matter who's doing it. And, and that's the, the pivotal piece uh, to any organization as you struggle with uh, labor in the markets, finding great account managers, great supervisors and leads in the property locations that can communicate effectively. So creating that scale of efficiency through consistency of process would be uh, the one thing that I would highlight the most. Great. Thank you for your answers. That, that's it for Q&A. That's it. Awesome. Well, I want to take this moment to thank everybody for attending today. Uh, we hope you have a, a blessed week. And for more details, you have my contact information on the screen. And I hope you uh, definitely received a lot of value out of the call today. And uh, again, thank you for your time. Thanks, everybody.